Welcome back to U.S. Farm Report. Trusted, timely, tradition. Well, it's been more than six weeks since Russia invaded Ukraine, and for Ukrainians, it's caused chaos and devastation. And it's also causing a wave of unknowns around the world. But for those still there, what is it like to actually farm in Ukraine right now? We get a firsthand view this week from the fields of Ukraine. As the crisis in Ukraine continues, farmers in Ukraine are staring at a stark reality. Part of Ukraine is occupied by Russian uh, troops, so we, many farmers don't have today access to their fields. Um, and uh, when you say no access, it means it's, you can hear the shelling, you can uh, see the missiles, and uh, some tractors can, be, can get into on the mines which are in the field. And that's uh, the most dangerous uh, situation. Nick Gordachuk farms in Kyiv and recently spoke to Farm Journal's Clinton Griffiths. He says as soon as Russia invaded Ukraine, he and his family were forced to evacuate. And after 24 days away, only Nick returned to the farm. There are several challenges we are now facing uh, when it comes to the season. At this moment, we, would be, we should be in the field and we should be putting some fertilizer to winter wheat, for example. But we cannot do it because... Um, in those areas which were under Russian occupation, we find mines in the field or we find some old, some, some uh, uh, rockets that did not explode because they were too old maybe. And um, for this uh, reason, we need to wait until the war officially is over and we can get some uh, special help to clean the, the fields from mines. But in other areas of Ukraine that haven't been occupied, he says farmers are in the field even trying to drill some early crops. But even then, resources and inputs are a major unknown. Recently, most of attacks have been on um, diesel and petrol stations, and uh, we find a lot of uh, explosions in those uh, places. And uh, so there is a deficit of uh, diesel and gasoline for the farms. And farmers have problems also with uh, fertilizer and availability of crop protection. And that will be, uh, I would say, very challenging, um, even for those areas where there is no uh, Russian occupation in Ukraine. Just this week, Ukraine's president accused Russian forces of deliberately targeting the country's essential food supplies. At least now, we estimate that 25% uh, of the area will not be uh, planted. Uh, but that's uh, one problem. Another problem we see at the moment that some farmers are not thinking about planting because we don't know where we will sell our uh, our crops. Nick says ports along the Black Sea are being blocked by Russian forces, which is yet another hurdle for Ukraine. For example, in normal year, Ukraine would be uh, exporting three to four million tons per month of, uh, of grains. Uh, now we exported for last month only 800 to 900,000 tons. It's a crisis that has the world on edge and now a realignment of trade may be underway. On Monday, China made its largest buy of corn since May of 2021. The purchase has been rumored for you know 30 or 45 days about China potentially doing some corn business. And probably as symbolic as anything, uh, given the timing, uh, I think a lot of people suspect that this could be just the beginning of a trend potentially of them trying to fill some of the lost Black Sea uh, you know, supplies uh, due to the Ukrainian conflict. Even if the purchase is a possible sign China is concerned about world grain supplies, the total impact is far from known. I would contend that for wheat, we have a better handle than where we sit with corn at the moment. Uh, when I look at the wheat crop, especially the, the wheat that was left to be exported, it was primarily in Russia. Uh, out, of the two, out of the two countries, Russia had, had more to export, and we have seen wheat leave Russia, and I think that's what's kind of tampered down this, this wheat market a little bit. Ukraine ranks ninth in the world for wheat production and sixth for corn, and is the top sunflower seed supplier in the world. I can't even imagine what it must be like to, to be a producer in a country where, you know, a, a war breaks out in your wheat field. Uh, I, I can't even imagine what that's like for them. It's all the uncertainty around financing and, and getting input products. Uh, it has to be incredibly challenging for them that we just frankly can't relate to here. It's a crisis hitting far beyond just agriculture. As Ukrainians say, it will have a lasting impact no matter when and how it ends. Today is that uh, psychologically this uh, generation of children, they, they will never be like they've been before the, the war. 
Now, the Wall Street Journal reported this week the situation has actually sparked a global shortage of sunflower oil, which is pushing prices of other edible oils to record highs. And it's another factor that could fuel more food inflation. All right, we need to take a quick break, and then our marketing roundtables will pick back up next. U.S. Farm Report is brought to you by Germinator Closing Wheels. Germinator, it's not just any closing wheel. Reach your yield potential. Pre-order by April 30th with coupon code USFR for $2 shipping.